Number 10, a cashier began the day with $140 change fund. His cash register totals were $4,529 cash received and $389.15 in cash paid out. There was $4,278.15 cash in the register. How much was cash over or short? What are we doing? Okay, that should be what we need, right? And then we compare that to the 4,278. If we're short, then we owe that money, right? That means uh, we gave change back around or something. Anybody need to see the real math up here? The grand total was short by $1.70. You just compare it to this one. Yep, so you can, so you yep. Subtract it. Oh, yep, you subtract it. So you can subtract it. I would always take this one <laughs> minus that. And then if it's negative, you're short. If it's mm -hmm. positive, you're over. So. Are you take which one minus the one? I would take the your answer that you got. Minus the one you told me. Uh, yeah. You know what I told you? I don't really remember. <laughs> Like no, take the one in the book. Take this minus and then if it's negative, you're short. If it's positive, you get that one back. You basically get to keep that dollar seventy as a tip. Oh, they were over? Yep. Wait, so they were over seventy or short? They were short. Okay. So didn't you get a negative? Yep. Yeah. Alright, number thirteen. So this is one of those on number 13 where you kind of got to do your little uh, chart. One of the things that we, I noticed on um, our charts, remember, this is the one that I gave you the little thing that you had to fill out, okay? And there was a credit here, and then a debit column, and then basically a running total. Remember that? Okay. What are credits? Our credit's good or bad? They're good. They're good? Wait, no, they're not. They are. They are? Yeah. Okay. I guess that's that. I guess they're good. So, credits. What, what is a credit? Credit. Huh? Money back. Okay, so how do you get money back? Okay. So, so this is an actual like credit. What else? Payments. Payments, credits, or debits? Credits and Payments are actually good for us, right? When we say debits, we're saying that we're getting more stuff. So we're paying this off. So this is when we buy things. Buy materials. So Credits, am I adding or subtracting from my total? Subtracting. I'm actually subtracting, right? I'm adding my debits. So I'm getting more materials. Okay, so a wholesaler recorded these transactions in April for a Rasher Hardware's account. April 1st, they had a balance of 3482. Okay. Um, then it says April 7th, there was an invoice for $4,233. What's that mean? An invoice. Yeah. Invoices are always debits. What was the number again? 4, 2, 3, 4. This was what, sorry? Three, four, one. Mm -hmm. So again, what's that mean? That just means that's what they're naming it. You know, the actual invoice that came to your business. So what am I doing here? Adding. I'm adding that to this, right? 5, 11, 7, 70. Okay? So again, we bought stuff. Okay? Um, next part. 
April 12th, there's a payment of 3,482. So payment, 3,482. Obviously we should be at 4,233, right? We just paid off what we originally had. Okay. Next, uh, April 13th, a credit memo for 7840. 7840. Credit memo. So, add or subtract. Subtract, right? We got this money back. This is what Tyrell was talking about. Right? We had a bad bag of seed or something, so we sent it back. Or something. So, we're subtracting. Uh, I think we're going to have 60. Um, and April 28th, the invoice number 427 for 1873 So again, invoices go where? In the debit. 1,800 what? And so I'm going to what? And 0.607, 12, 10, 6. $6,027, $60. Everybody agree? Okay, so... This is where you did get a little confused, all right? Anything that says a credit or a payment has to go in the same column. Credits and payments are good for us. So again, this is like, this is our business that we're running and we're getting this again. Remember Luke was the big guy that everybody was buying from. So Luke would have sent us this. This is us doing business with Luke. This isn't us selling it to the regular people. That's a whole different thing. Make sense? You got to do this again tomorrow. What does it mean about this one and then the last one? Oh, there's a difference. Oh, the last one was uh, Why? The credits are always trickier. Yeah. Why did he say it was trickier? I think the I, I think the part saying that it was like paying off like the truck. Yeah, I think you're right. When it says, when it, just read if it's a, a credit, though, or if it's paying off. And, and so, if it says it's a credit, or if it's a payment of that, a payment should never be to your credit memo. Okay? If, they, if you get a credit, anything, it should always be a good thing for you. Okay? I remember what you're talking about now. Yes, ma'am. $9.24. All right, uh, number 15 is the next one. Cash and trade discounts, remember these? What does 210, 120, and 60 mean? Uh, by the what? Okay, when you say that, it's the number of days though, right? So the first thing I got to figure out, it says an invoice was dated November 6th, what is the amount of cash discount and price, cash price if the invoice is paid on November 23rd? Do I consider November 6th my first day? Yes. yes. Yep. The game that is down is your first day. All right. So November 6th to the 23rd. How many days? What? What? So am I using the first one? Yes. No. You just said 17. Well, we're using the second one. We're using the second one. So we're going to take... Uh, so 3,410 times 0.1, right? And again, this is what I get for what? Your discount. Why do I get a discount? Uh, essentially, I'm paying it early, right? I'm paying it early. What does the last number mean? That's my due date. So, if Easton, like his homework, comes in three days later, he gets charged for that. <laughs> Maybe that's what I should start doing. Charging, Charging for that's late homework. Is that along with charging $10? This is $34.10. So, again, that's my what? Amount of discount, and so my grand total would be three thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars and ninety cents. Did not agree. 
Okay. Oh, wait, my fault. This should be 0.01. My fault. This should be 0.01. Because it was only a 1% discount, not a 10%, right? We got a 10% discount. Everybody's probably trying to pay you. Okay, pay attention. Um, $34.10. And then $3,375.90. So my fault, I didn't have enough decimal places. Everybody good with that one? Uh, 16. A straw hat has a list price of $26 and is offered at a 45% trade discount. What is the amount of the trade discount and the invoice price? Essentially, this is what? This is just a regular discount, like if you had something at the end of the year. So I'm going to take $26 times 0.45 and then subtract those two numbers. Agreed? That one hopefully isn't too bad. Eleven dollars and seventy cents, and then fourteen dollars and thirty cents. Are we good with that one? Yep. Uh, now the tricky one. A box of party streamers has a list price of fifteen dollars and seventy cents. The series discount offered is twenty percent, fifteen percent, and five percent. What is the invoice price of the box of streamers? So I can do this a couple of different ways, remember? Exactly right. So how do you want to do it? Compliment. What did I have to do with the compliment theory? So I'm going to take 100 minus each percent, right? First one is 20 order, the other two, please. Thank you. So 80, uh, 90, or 85. What do I do with these? These are all decimals. I'm going to multiply all these together. Okay. And then if I'm going to leave it as a decimal, then I'm going to subtract it from one, basically. Or you can think about it as 100. And so if I multiply all that together, anybody do that? <coughs> Say it one more time. 0.647. So, then I'm going to take that and do what with it? Times 1570. So I get what? This got you what? Oh, I thought you said seven. You are the $10 and 14 cents. Wait, so when do you... Subtracting. Well, you can subtract this by one, and then, then if you subtract this, then you're finding the amount of discount. If you use this number, this is your actual answer for the invoice. So if you subtract this, if you did this uh, math, this would be a smaller number if you subtract it, and that would be the amount of discount. Otherwise, you just subtract these two, and that gives you the amount of discount. Are you doing a video submission? I don't know. What? I don't know. You can pick whatever one you want. That one's probably the easiest. I think, yeah. You can do it. Okay, I'm just that answer was just. I know. I'm kind of all confused today. 19. A store carries women's suits in a $400 price line. The markup is 47% of the selling price. What is the highest amount the store may pay for suits to get the desired markup? Remember what we had to do in this one? Say it one more time. 
If you take 400 times 0.47, what do you get? And then uh, subtract that from 400. Two twelve. So we're going to take the price times the markup percent, and then I'm going to take that and subtract it from my original amount. Two hundred and twelve dollars. So yeah, again, that's you buying that from Luke. Okay, that's the highest they can if they can uh, want to do a forty-seven percent markup. Uh, number twenty, Multi Sports sold a hockey jersey for one hundred and twelve bucks. The cost of the jersey was eighty-five dollars. What rate of per markup on cost did Multi Sports earn on the jersey? I got to subtract them first. Don't forget to subtract them. So take 112 minus 85. And then do I do it by the original amount or the new amount? The original amount. So take 112 minus 85 divided by 112. And they have 32%. They have 32%. I got 24 too. M12 minus 85 divided by 85. So, sorry, you do take it times the cost of the jersey was. Oh, yeah. The cost of the jersey was. So again, the original amount in this case is always the smaller amount because you're talking about what you're selling it for at $112 is the markup. So the original is the smaller one in this case. So it's 31, well, they did it to the nearest percent, which would have been 32. Um, otherwise it's 31.8%. Uh, well, yeah, because it's a big decimal. So, you look at that like you're scared. She is. I'm not scared. Uh, 21. At the end of the season, a ski sweater with a marked price of $140 was offered at a 60% discount. What is the selling price of the sweater? That one's basically like a normal discount one. Um, $56. Number 21? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then the rest of them were pretty simple, actually, right? 22, a research firm mailed 12,500 surveys to a company's shareholders. The number of valid surveys returned was 4,872. What was the response rate? What are we going to do? No, because they tell you that they were valid. So you can use that number. Do you want the valid or no? So take 4,872 divided by 12,500. For 39% if you round to the nearest percent like they said. Make sure you read the directions and see what you need to round to. Everybody good? So the only way that you would subtract is if they told you the non-valid ones, right? You want the amount of surveys that were good. Uh, 24 is the next one. You do not have to do a manual. Uh, 24, a uh, four-year-old company sales last year were $3.12 million. The average sales increase over the past four years is 32.5% based on the rate project this year's sales. So it's an increase, right? So I'm gonna take my 3.12 million times 0.325, and 
and then take that answer and add it back to my 3.12 million. I'm going to take 3 point times whatever the percent was, so I think it was 32 and a half. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to multiply those two. Then I'm going to take this answer right here and add it back into that. Number. How much? Four million one hundred and thirty four thousand dollars. Okay. Um twenty six. A hardware chain's total annual sales were estimated to be five point two million dollars out of a total of eighteen million and estimated sales of all hardware stores in the area. What market share does the chain have? Just divide, yeah. So you take your share divided by the grand total share. So 5.2 million divided by 18 million. Twenty, yes. 28.9. So this one said the nearest 10%. So yeah. Uh, finally, uh, the advertising one, this, this is the one that kind of caused us the most problem lately, was the advertising ones. A weekly newspaper charges $82 a column inch and one column width. What is the cost of an ad that runs two column inches and two column widths? 82 times 2 times 2 or 82 times 4. I don't think there's any ones that have, uses that chart that they have to follow. Wasn't the chart that? Oh, yeah. That's just because we didn't know that. Yeah. Nope. 328, yes. That's the answer. Yep. That's it. What's the answer for 30? For 30.086. So, um, I should. Because I don't think I did my own one right, but like I knew, like, I didn't subtract.